In the 80s of the last century, there was a series of unique racing motorcycles that changed the perception of what a motorcycle should be made of and how it can look. Their technologies impressed 78-year-old Seichiro Honda, who seemed to have seen everything in the motorcycle world. These motorcycles shook the motorcycle world with car suspensions, lack of frame, engine under the tank and exhaust system above it. This bike weighed less than its competitors and was tuned more finely and accelerated much more intensively. This is the expansion of the ELF team into the royal class of the Grand Prix and their series of super innovative Honda ELF motorcycles. Elf Brand joined motorcycle racing in 1973 and a season later, Phil Reed on MV Augusta won French championship in GP500 class, now MotoGP, establishing their presence in the world of racing. But with each year, sponsorship attracted the Elf less and less. They needed their own victories. At the gala dinner, Elf's marketing director Francois Gité met with Renault's racing constructor Andrea de Cartanzo. The last one was one of the top engineers at Renault then, designed by Alpina Renault 442, which later won the 24 Hours of Le Mans race. Being a fan of two-wheeled vehicles, especially enduro, de Cartan was also full of original ideas for building motorcycles, which were accompanied by a huge experience from the world of car racing, Having become interested in Francois Gité's ideas, de Gartanzo allocated a budget for a prototype motorcycle in his free time from Renault tests to test his ideas. Thus the Honda Elf Motorcycles project was born. The first model was a motorcycle with the marking Elf X, where X stands for experimental. The experimental motorcycle had numerous automotive innovations and was showcased at the 1978 Paris Motor Show. The motorcycle included most of the primary design objectives of de Cortin's, which he summarized as the following. I wanted to get rid of the biased notion of what a motorcycle should be made of and how it should look, he explained. Descartes established himself the objective of accomplishing multiple goals, lower center of gravity, incorporate natural suspension, reduce weight, eliminate frame completely and ensure overall weight reduction. The engine was supposed to become part of the chassis, in addition to the main goals, there were also secondary ones, such as an ideal weight distribution of 50-50, reducing air resistance coefficient, the ability to quickly change wheels, as well as improving airflow to the radiator for more efficient cooling. Elf X, built with Renault's permission in De Carton's free time, incorporated many of these design features that would later become its hallmark. The foundation of the machine is the Yamaha TZ750 engine, modified with reinforcement to support suspension elements. The front and rear suspensions are directly connected to the engine. Parallel levers replace the usual front fork. The dumbbell tank for lowering the center of gravity was located under the engine, and the body structure in the aerodynamic tube provided maximum efficiency. Elf X was fundamentally a radical racing car. In 1978, Michel Ruggeri tested a prototype on the track, after which in the same year he made his debut in Nagaro in an endurance race. Yet the progress was sluggish, hampered by problems with the Yamaha two-stroke engine, unfit as the main support of the motorcycle, and part-time employment as a decorator at Renault. Plus, as often happens with avant-garde designs, they looked revolutionary and delighted with their speed, but suffered from unreliability. However, Elf X made sufficient of an impression for Honda to demonstrate interest in it. 79 Honda pilot test increased interest. 99 interest grew stronger. Soon cooperation began between the Japanese manufacturer and the French fuel giant. Honda engineers suggested installing a 1,000 cubic centimeter four-stroke engine from the RSC model that participated in an endurance race. De Carton will create a new motorcycle around this engine using experience from Elf X. The outcome was the Elf E Endurance, a variant designed for endurance racing, 
which made its debut in Baldur's in 1981, and with substantial backing from Elf, competed in every race of the Endurance World Championship until the conclusion of 1983. Elf E was fast, often took the lead and led in the early laps, but the unreliability of the design and chassis became known during the races. Elf E, refined De Cortanza ideas, took third in TTI Endurance 1000 at Mugello in 83. Later, this motorcycle version was modified for high-speed races. They added an elegant streamlined fairing and adjusted it accordingly. The modified motorcycle was named Elf R and in 1986 it achieved multiple world records setting a new benchmark. The 1000cc version set a record for max speed of 321 km per h and there was also a 500cc two-stroke version. Endurance racing enabled Elf to enter the prestigious world of prototype Grand Prix racing and receive optimal advertising dividends. Honda supported them by providing their two-stroke three-cylinder RS500 engines. And in June 1984, longtime employee and pilot De Carton for Christian Lellard began testing a new prototype called Elf 2. The most interesting feature of the model was the unique steering system, the so-called aircraft steering wheel, which moved not left-right, but forward-backward. Two Marzocchi shock absorbers were used in the suspension, located under the engine and working on traction, not compression. Additionally, a brand new, tested in an aerospace tube, body kit with wings and carbon brakes. Generally, in this model, the hand of a Formula One engineer was clearly visible. Elf 2 was literally packed with aerospace know-how. 78-year-old Saichiro Honda, regarded in Japan as nearly the motorcycle inventor, specially flew to Paris to see the futuristic Elf 2, then ordered to support Elf with engines, tests and races in every way. Honda later purchased 13 of the 18 team patents. The Blackbird, as it was known in the French press unfortunately, did not take part in the competition. Pilots struggled to adapt to the unique control system and inadequate damping of the Marzocchi pair caused irreversible control issues. He made his debut only a year later on a French Jeep in Lehman, already in the form of a less exotic Elf 2A, with a proven steering mechanism like on the Elf E and a revised suspension. At that time, Descartes was forced to withdraw from the Elf project due to pressure from Renault. Gitter assigned the next stage of development to two people, to the racer Serge Rosset and the engineer draftsman, assistant to De Cartanza d'Antrami. Gitter and Elf, representing management, awaited results, so Rossetto and Trami had to take action. These commitments had an immediate effect and in 1986 the Elf 3 model was ready, which used factory NS500 engines and improved modifications of previous models. The peak of Honda Elf Duo's achievements begins with the Elf 3 model, and at this moment it is simply impossible not to mention the racer named Ron Haslam. Duo Haslom, nicknamed Rocket, and Elf 3 brought team significant results in 1986 season, taking first place in Macau and finishing ninth at end of season, surpassing Suzuki team, thereby proving that alternative design worked just as well as usual classic one, and sometimes even better. Also pay attention to how different the appearance of Elf 3 is from the motorcycles of other teams. The low squat silhouette with smooth lines and unique suspension clearly distinguished the motorcycle in those years. Serge Rosset called the suspension's VJC system. What does this suspension provide? Firstly, it offers unprecedented braking stability. Thanks to the consistent steering geometry, you can brake harder and later than on any other bike and turn without compromising control. Another advantage of the technology was fine tuning. All regular settings as well as tilt angle, wheelbase, ground clearance and weight distribution were easily adjustable. Furthermore, wheel replacement was greatly simplified, crucial in races. Later, in 1987, Honda initiated negotiations on leasing ELF patents for mass production, and in September of the same year, an agreement was signed. 
The first model with the patented one-sided swing arm elf, also known as Pro Arm, became the iconic Honda VFR 750RRC30, or colloquially referred to as VFR. Honda recognized the prospects and had faith in French technologies, and all would be well. The world would have witnessed numerous intriguing technical solutions, but it unfolded differently, and the ELF team, unable to fully unleash its potential, gradually lost ground. In 1986, Dan Tremie spends two weeks with the HRC team, citing the development of new parts for the future ELF 4 and working on the NSR 500C engine. This leads to a delay in the new prototype and Ron Haslam starts the 1987 season on standard Honda NSR bikes in ELF colors. However, he holds the fourth place in the table this season, having taken part in just a few final Grand Prix on ELF 4. As it turned out, serious brake problems delayed the racing debut of the motorcycle. Nineteen eighty eight came, the last year of the racing project elf, mainly because of the unavoidable departure of the leader, Francois Gita, to retire. Rose and Tremi have designed a new latest elf under the number five. With a solid magnesium chassis, the Nissan front brakes, which were supplied by Honda L5, performed quite well. Competitors are here at present. The customary confrontation became more arduous and demanding. In the end, the seventh places and the eleventh in the table became a disappointing finale of such a promising project, which actually led such a useful technology. Honda obviously thought the same way because today every VFR is equipped with the same pro arm swing arm, which reminds of this random collaboration. He didn't win the championship, but the idea of a technological alternative racing motorcycle that can be easily customized to any taste came true. In 1983, Dave Alden wrote the following words in his Elvish. Thank you to everyone who watched this video, which took a lot of effort. Welcome newcomers, 